Hey guys, how's it going? Um, today is a very special day because today, because of all of you watching my videos, was the first day that I have actually gotten to work with a brand. So I know I do a lot of in-ground gardening, actually mostly in-ground gardening, but the reality is a lot of people don't in-ground garden, whether they don't have the physical ability to or they need something higher. Um, I actually built raised beds for my dad. He's about six foot two, um, shockingly, because I'm very short. Um, I built raised beds for him that are probably like four and a half feet tall, so he doesn't have to bend over. So I'm really excited to unpack this with you guys. I literally haven't even opened the box. <laughs> so we're going to unpack it, put it together, fill it, and then plant it. Um, and I'm so excited. I think I know where I want to put it. I think, but I'm not 100% sure. So, without further ado, let me intro introduce you to the Vego Garden Metal Raised Bed. Okay guys, so I chose, oh, I chose this one. It is round and it's metal and it requires a little bit of assembly, but not too much. It's about 17 inches high and 42 inches across. So it's not one of their biggest ones. They have a ton of really great options um, and they have a lot of really interesting and unique sizes. Like these are all of the things I'll need to put it together and the mandible. Okay y'all, so I chose this really pretty pearly white color. Um, I'm really excited. Oh, I'm so pumped. Um, now I am going to fill this because I don't have, truthfully, I don't have the uh, money to fill this with completely raised bed mix. So I am actually going to fill it with some logs, branches, leaves, um, and then probably only do like the top 12 inches of soil. Um, so I'll be planting flowers and stuff in here, stuff that doesn't root really, really deeply. Um, but I am excited. Looks like I will need my drill, but this shouldn't take too long to put together, honestly. for yet. Yeah, this will be super fast with my drill. Oh, it actually comes with, oh, those are for the screws. Sweet. Step one, remove everything from the box. Done. Step two is to use uh, the cap nut, which is Honestly, I only have 30 minutes until like my dinner is gonna be done. <laughs> I'm reading early tonight. So I really don't have that much time to put this together, but I think it's gonna be quick. So this is your cap nut, and this is your standard nut. So that all makes a lot of sense. And then, oh, okay. So here's your screw right here and so what you do is your screw here is going to be on the outside you're going to use your regular nut right here to tighten get away mosquito and then like this and then you use the cap nut to cap it off so that you don't hurt yourself if you go to get in the bed. So that's what it should look like. And then I'm dropping it. Okay, and it looks like this, the rubber edging is for the top. All right, this seems like it's gonna be like stupid easy. Sweet, now I just have to do this, one, two, three, four, five, six, a lot more times. <laughs> Okay guys, I did have to stop for dinner, <laughs> um, but I'm almost done. There's only one section left. 
this is way bigger than I thought it was, which is fine. We'll still find a spot for it, but it's not going to go where I thought it was going to go. We're going to have to get creative, but that's okay. Okay, guys, we are built, and now we're going to put this metal on the outside, kind of cushion it. I guess we'll just start right here. No idea what I'm doing. Wow, this looks nice. This reminds me of like closing a Ziploc bag and how you have to be really careful when you do that. Make sure it happens right. I feel I feel like I'm just in like a giant kiddie pool. Are you supposed to cut it? I guess that makes sense. Maybe you can do it with this knife. Oh, I can. Okay. All right. There she is. All right, so I'm gonna go put this in a couple spots and see if we can find it a good home. I'm thinking it would be great right there at the end. However, this time of year that spot gets just terrible lighting. My other option is to move these two things. Put it right here in the corner of the house. like that option. I want to be able to see it. It's so cool. Look at it. Wait, I wonder if it'll fit right there. Hold on. Well, I like that spot because I can see it. What do you guys think? This is kind of this view. Ooh, I like it. My poor boyfriend, when we moved into this house, I said, no, 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 there's three garden beds, that's it. Those three were the original. And I was like, well, you know, I want somewhere to put my tomatoes. So that's how we ended up with this one. And then I was like, well, you know, I need some grow bags. <laughs> and it's just continued to evolve, so. Um, you know, we should all thank him that he is uh, very patient and very kind. And that he loves me. I think this will be its home. I like this. Stay tuned because the next step is filling this thing, which I'm going to be doing with some wood, some leaves, some cardboard. We're just going to use all kinds of stuff that's going to break down so that we're not spending, you know, my life savings on uh, soil. So. Stay tuned for the uh, the next step. Hey y'all, so today I started filling my metal raised bed, my Vago garden bed. Um, I mowed my lawn, which we don't treat our lawn with anything, so I feel perfectly fine about using grass clippings. Um, and we had some old sticks we needed to get rid of and just some other lawn cuttings. And look at how much this thing is filled up. That's probably more than halfway. Now because it's a lot of green material, it is going to like sink down. <laughs> so that's something to think about if you choose to fill your garden bed in this way. I actually filled my grow bags about a third of the way with leaves before I dumped a bunch of dirt on there. Um, and so what happens is they settle and then you have to add more soil, but it definitely helps the initial cost of doing it all. Um, so I've got some more sticks, and the only thing you want to do with this is you almost have to treat it like a compost pile. So I've got tons of green in there right now, and now I need to do some brown. So for browns, I am going to be using cardboard boxes, um, as well as some dried sticks. So these sticks are sticks that we have trimmed our trees both in the front and backyard with, and so I'm just going to get those broken up 
uh, shred up the cardboard a little bit. And then this is almost going to act like a massive compost container. <laughs> um, and I'll see what else I can fit in there. But then I think I'm going to be in a much better spot in regards to buying bagged soil. If you were to fill this up with just bagged soil, you're probably looking at spending about $200 and a lot of uh, time both transporting the soil, but also actually dumping it out. This way, this stuff will break down, provide nutrition for the soil, and then I'll just kind of top off the soil over time. So this is a great way to fill raised garden beds. Um, and if you don't necessarily have enough materials, start asking your neighbors. People love to not have to do anything with this stuff, or they're happy to save you cardboard boxes or do anything like that. So, you know, don't be scared to use your community and ask around, even if it's like, you know, your family or your parents or even your friends if you just ask them to like save cardboard boxes and other types of materials like that, um, that they would be very useful to you. So we're not quite done yet. <laughs> we still have to finish filling this guy up um, and then plant it out, but we're getting close and getting very excited. <sighs> hey guys, um, it is Saturday. Um, I spent my Friday afternoon getting this guy filled with cardboard and grass clippings and branches and now I have made a trip to get dirt. So I'm going to use a really premium organic mix to get started and then I also got some composted cow manure topsoil that's like a little more fine. Sometimes with this premium potting mix it can be a bit uh, a bit woody almost. So like I said, um, really the goal with filling a very large bed like this with somebody on a budget, like me, is to fill it up for free as much as you can. Um, and then knowing that as things break down, you're gonna have to add more soil on top. But I would much rather spend $50 on soil at a time than bite the bullet and spend like $300 in soil. Um, so I got five bags of, I think it's two cubic feet. So it's 40 dry quarts. I got five bags of those and then two bags of the topsoil. So we are going to see how far that gets us in this process. So sometimes with composted cow manure, you end up with bits that look like this. <laughs> what do we think that is, friends? I just go ahead and break these up. Okay, y'all, so I have one bag of soil left. Um, I think that's as full as I'm gonna get it today, but uh, the, the organic uh, potting soil or, or container soil, I guess you could call it, um, I bought was $8 a bag. Um, it is premium, so you could probably save a bit of money by buying another brand, um, but then the Kampur, Kampur, cow manure compost topsoil that I bought was like $2 a bag and I probably could have used a little bit more of that to be honest. Um, it's not quite as rich in nutrients but that's why you have the premium potting soil. So um, I'm going to leave this bag out here, the extra bag that I have, because once you get this water down it really kind of like sinks a lot and I also know that it's going to sink because of all the other organic material we put in the bottom. So I have an extra bag to top everything off as necessary. Um, but I only spent $50 today in soil. Um, whereas, you know, if you would have filled this up differently, it would have been a lot more expensive. So between the actual cost of the bed, which um, I got this one for free so I could demo it for you guys, um, the actual cost of the bed is right around $130 plus about $50 in soil. You're looking at $180 for a really nice, well-sustaining garden bed. Um, this company is based out of Houston, Texas. Um, I don't know where the materials are made, um, but I do know that it's based out of Houston. Um, and everything is non-corrosive, so it's not gonna corrode, it's not gonna leak any kind of bad materials into your soil. And yeah, so I'm going to get this watered a little bit later, and then we'll find something to plant it up with. Okay guys, I got the rest of my lettuce plugs transplanted into the Vego garden. Um, and now I'm going to tuck in some other seeds. Um, I kind of just need to gum through and reseed in general. So 
with that bed, I don't know why I have this vision of like something tall in the middle and then like a, then like a salad, like, ring. It sounds dumb now that I'm saying it out loud, but we're gonna try it. So I'm gonna put some of the Fireball Blend Zinnias in the middle, probably just like two or three. And then I'm gonna put some nasturtiums, both this is the Alaska Variegated Nasturtium that is um, in these really beautiful yellows and oranges and reds. I'm also gonna do some of the um, Alaska Red Shade Nasturtiums just for some fall color. And then I'm also going to direct seed spinach because I lost all my spinach. <laughs> um, so that's what's gonna go in the Vego garden. Um, and then I just have some other stuff to reseed really quick. But Let's go ahead and plant this. I'm so excited. I'm gonna plant these nasturtium seeds right on the edge, right here, so they can kind of spill over. There's your nasturtium seed, and we're literally just gonna stick those in the ground right there. Do them like maybe six inches apart. Nothing crazy. And actually, I want to interplant the other type, so. Sometimes, sometimes I kind of just stick stuff in. Probably not my best uh, strategy, but it's fine. So we'll just kind of, I don't remember where I put the holes specifically, but it's fine. We'll figure it out later. This is like reckless, reckless gardening, y'all. So that's what we're going to do for the nasturtiums. So hopefully those guys come up. Those zinnia seeds are super tiny. And so what I'm gonna do is in this middle area, I'm literally just gonna like sprinkle them kind of in the middle and then just kind of spread over them. Nothing too specific. So I now have this covered with the insertions. I have that middle section covered. So now I'm gonna come through and do a ring of spinach. I feel like the way I think these things are gonna go, it actually works maybe 50% of the time. But the 50% it works is very worth it. So then with the spinach seed, spinach seed is bigger. So that makes it a little bit easier. But honestly, I have, I have the most luck with spinach seed when I just sprinkle it, just like I just did. So. That is what we're gonna do. We're gonna sprinkle it and then just cover over it. <laughs> Guys, so we will keep that watered. Um, and also it's gonna continue to sink as things kind of get established. But I made sure I got it really nice and wet. I took like a little hand fork to it and fluffed it up and made sure that the water was getting all the way down there. Um, usually when you have a topsoil medium, uh, there will be like a lot of clay material in that so you want to make sure you actually mix it <laughs> um, so that it retains water the way it's supposed to so yeah, I'm pretty pumped about how this is going so far I will show you guys an update next week okay hey y'all I sure hope you can hear me also go bucks um, I I am a buckeye bleed scarlet and gray but wanted to show you something exciting I was really hoping that we were gonna get some sprouting action in the Vago garden bed um, before I was gonna publish this video. And I was getting a little nervous, but last day before I'm publishing the video. And what do we have, friends? A sprout. Look at it. I don't know if you guys can see it because my shadow, but it's right there. And then here's a nasturtium that's coming up. So, I think we're in good shape. Stuff should start sprouting up here over the next few days. So, when it gets chilly, and by chilly I mean like nights in the 50s, days in the 70s, here in Texas, it gets very windy. So, I really hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay y'all, thank you so much for following me on this journey of building the Vego garden bed I'm really excited to see how it performs, but also how I, as a gardener, uh, perform <laughs> with the Vego garden bed. Um, yeah, it's definitely worth a shot. It was really easy to put together, pretty easy to fill, um, you know, if you've got the, the tips and tricks. And yeah, 
Thank you so much for Vego Gardening for sponsoring this video and sending me the raised garden bed. There is a link down below. It is an affiliate link, but it will give you a percentage, either percentage or money off of the Vego Garden bed if you use that link. So thank you so much for supporting me in my first sponsored video and hope you learned something. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.